Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how the Dodge Challenger Demon uses the air conditioning system to create more power. Now I had the pleasure of driving the Dodge Demon on a drag strip and I also got to chat with several of the engineers who worked on the project to learn about how this system works. And you know you're probably intuitively thinking uh, how does you know, using engine power to create more engine power work, but we'll get into how the entire system works and why it is possible um, based on the discussions I had with their engineers. And, you know, looking at this, it definitely looks confusing at first glance. Uh, this is kind of an exploded view of what's going on. There's three different cooling systems we're going to be talking about here, and we'll definitely make sense of it all by the end of this video, I promise that. Uh, and so, you know, looking at it, the three systems, we've got the engine in black, uh, so that's the engine cooling with the black circuit here. We've got the inner cooler, which is in purple, that's got a cooling system, all of that in purple, and then the air conditioning system is in brown. And this isn't an exact replica of what's going on in the car, uh, but it's close enough to where we can understand uh, what's happening and how they're implementing this system. So, starting off with the very first thing, let's look at the engine. You've got, of course, your ambient air coming in through the air filter. It goes through the supercharger. That compresses that air, heats it up, so you've got hot air. You don't want to put hot air in the engine. Uh, that's less dense, more likely to have knock. So you run it through an intercooler. Then you have cooler air and send that air into the engine. Now the engine gets its cooling uh, using a radiator like all the other internal combustion engines out there. So you've got a water pump which will be pulling uh, fluid from the engine radiator and then pumping that fluid uh, through the circuit so you've got hot liquid coolant coming out. Uh, and then the cooled liquid which will be cooled by the ambient air, that radiator, mounted at the front of the vehicle. Now your second system you have is the intercooler. So it has its own cooling circuit. The engine has a uh, engine driven water pump, however the intercooler is using an electric pump so it's driven by the battery ultimately. And so that intercooler, uh, you've got your hot liquid coolant after that air is exchanged uh, to cool down the air that's going into the engine. So the hot coolant comes out, passes through your heat exchanger up front, you've got ambient air passing through that heat exchanger and then that uh, cools it down, it goes through an electric pump through a power chiller and then into the intercooler. We'll get into the power chiller in a bit. Uh, up front is where you have your stack of the radiator, uh, the AC condenser, the heat exchanger for the intercooler, and you'll also have an engine cooling fan. And this isn't exactly accurately drawn. It's gonna be much more compact and the engine cooling fans will pull in air uh, through the entire thing. And then your third system, uh, your AC system, and some of the components are left out just to make it simpler to understand. I have a separate video explaining how air conditioning systems work, but essentially you have an engine driven AC compressor uh, that's going to compress uh, hot gas refrigerant, which will then travel through the AC condenser up front. You'll put some, remove some of that heat. Uh, it's still gonna be a hot, uh, but now it will be liquid refrigerant You'll then send that through an expansion valve or there are other systems that you can use in order for that uh, liquid to expand and then cool. And so as it changes state, uh, you've got this little valve right here, a simplified version, but basically you can send it through the cabin evaporator uh, if you wanna cool the passengers off, or you can send that refrigerant uh, that's been chilled through your power chiller uh, to cool off the air going into the engine. Now it's one or the other, so you're not gonna be turning on your AC while you're running down the drag strip and getting the benefit of that which is fine, you know, you don't want to be drawing the AC just to cool you off, you want to be using it, if anything, to make more power, if not, just turn it off uh, so you have maximum power. But in this case, you actually want it on. So that will travel through, uh, you have this liquid to liquid, well, essentially liquid, the, the coolant, uh, the refrigerant will eventually turn into a gas as it expands going through that power chiller. And then you've got cool liquid coming from the electric pump for the intercooler circuit. And then as it goes through the power chiller, you use that AC uh, coolant uh, to actually have a cold liquid coolant travel into the intercooler to cool down this air. Now the power chiller alone running that AC system can reduce uh, the temperature of the air by 10 degrees Celsius. And the entire system using the heat exchanger uh, and the electric pump, the entire system can lower it by, lower it by 45 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, a differential of 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's their claims on the amount that they can reduce this intake air temperature going into the engine. Now a question you may have is, is this power chiller going to be running, is the AC system going to be running 
while you're going down that drag strip. And in fact, it is. This AC compressor has a clutch uh, connected to the engine. And so as long as the engine RPM is under 4,500 RPM, you will in fact be running this circuit, this AC circuit, and cooling that liquid coolant that's traveling through the intercooler using the power chiller. Uh, so pretty cool that it actually does benefit. Now the question you have, of course, is, wait, so you're using engine power to create more engine power. And yes, that's actually exactly what you're doing. It's the same idea with the supercharger. So the supercharger actually takes about 90 horsepower to run, uh, but it gives you one bar of pressure, so much more air that you can pack into the engine, and as a result, you make more power than the losses that it takes to run the supercharger. Is it super efficient? Not necessarily. Same with the AC system. It's not an, an efficiency improvement, but it is a power improvement. And so you're able to chill that air enough that you're, it's denser and you're also able to advance the timing more. And as a result of that, the power that you put in into chilling that air uh, will result in greater power output from the engine beca because you're able to advance that timing as a result of the cooler intake air. Uh, so pretty neat how that works and pretty neat that it actually is beneficial. And finally, let's get into this after run cooler. So once you run down the drag strip, uh, you're turning around, you're coming back, you're going to start waiting in line, uh, or let's say you're just going to go take a break and you're going to shut your car off. So you shut your car off and you don't want that to heat soak uh, the intake air so that the next time you go for a run, uh, that air is really hot. So what the system does, this after run cooler, is because the pump is electric uh, and the fan is electric, you can continue to run that engine cooling fan and the electric pump and you'll continue to run this cooler temp uh, circuit here for the inner cooler to make sure that when you do start back up, you're not gonna have super hot intake air temperatures. Uh, so pretty neat that they do that. That's the after run cooler portion. And then the SRT power chiller, uh, that's this device right here, uh, which is used to bring that down, which you could you know, potentially get below ambient because you're using refrigerant uh, rather than relying purely on the ambient air that's passing through the front heat exchanger in order to pull out that energy. So a really neat system, um, pretty cool to see this. First time this has been done in a production vehicle. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.